What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. I didn't catch this fish, unfortunately. Y'all are about to witness my worst best day of fishing ever. Probably the most emotional, mentally just, just terrible day of fishing I've ever had, up to a certain point. I'm gonna take you along with us in Venice, Louisiana on a yellowfin tuna trip on an amazing boat in an amazing Gulf of Mexico with amazing friends. And we partake in one of the craziest days of fishing I've ever seen. I'm gonna show you all that, but I'm not gonna show it to you yet. Tonight, I'm gonna to make some tuna basil rolls out of this big chunk of tuna that Kelly caught. Oh, big fish Bob. Big fish Bob indeed. This to me is probably my favorite thing to eat at a restaurant in Jupiter, Florida called The Food Shack. And I've tried to make it a couple times and it's never came out exactly the same. I think though now, tonight, it's going to. But first I gotta show you something new in my driveway that I'm super proud about. Let's go see. Kelly's like, do what? What's in your driveway? Let's just, oh. let's just go oh. see in the driveway. Voila! You guys, a lot of y'all that follow along know that I buy a lot of new trucks. One being, I love new trucks. Two, I work really hard and I feel like I spoil myself, but this actually has a crazy story to it. So my last truck that I owned, I was upside down and they should teach this in school with the kids these days on how to not get upside down, how to you know balance a checkbook. It wasn't until our economy just did what it did and now you can't get new trucks that my used truck was worth more than it was when I bought it and that's how I ended up getting this truck. And I gotta give a huge shout out to Bev Smith Toyota in Fort Pierce, Mr. Frank Gonzalez. Yo, check this thing out. Come here and look at the screen on the inside of this thing. Now it's a little dirty because Luke and I went hunting this weekend. Look how big the screen is. Look at the map. Bro, Kelly Young won't even get lost with this map. <laughs> it's an LED, so it's kind of flashy. It's not actually flashy in real life. Yeah, so that's LEDs. Anyhow, I want to talk to you a little bit about Bev Smith Toyota. Their service department is second to none. Their people are second to none. It's American owned. It's awesome people. And y'all just watch what you do when you buy a truck from there. One of the funniest things I've ever experienced. Take it in the showroom. Oh, take it in the showroom. We got a dog in the house. Dog When I say Bear Smith, you say Toyota. Bear Smith. Toyota. Bear Smith Toyota. We got Blue Gate. They bought a brand new 1794, baby. He got a dog you guys, do me a favor, make sure to check out Bev Smith Toyota. Come see the brains behind the operation, Mr. Frank Gonzalez. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Gabe. Now, for those of y'all who are wondering why I'm doing a Toyota commercial in the middle of a fishing video, this is my baby. But now, I'm gonna head to the grocery store and I'm gonna take it back to Louisiana. We're throwing topwater jerk baits on a real flimsy Shimano rod as far as I can, and we're getting these amazing yellowfin tuna bites. And just watch what happens fish after fish. I got two tuna on one hook. No, Wait, get over the side. Come on, come on. Black? Yeah. That's epic. <laughs> that is great. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa. No way. No way. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Dude. Oh. Wow. Benita's in that. Oh, my God. I'm going to one time. Oh, you know, sharks. How crazy oh, is that? <laughs> Holy moly. Two tuna. Yeah, hey, look at it. Yes. Oh my god, yes, 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 here yes, we yes. go. Come on. Here we Come go. On. Come on. Come 
Slack, force him in. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a picture perfect hookup. You got one of those, uh, not a rod at the fight. Yeah, right that, here. That soft thing. Oh, I gotta get this. Oh, yeah, he's a little softy. <laughs> Babe, I thought you were up to that first. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm on the, uh, you know, when we set the rod and the holders. <laughs> there you go. Try not to come up so high with it. Oh, Blue Gabe done stole the show. Short hey, it was the dip. He put the chew in. <laughs> I did. I put it a was. chew in my mouth and said, one will bite now. <laughs> Picture perfect hookup. All the fish are screaming out of the water, too. Gold, gold footage. All right. Nice. Tighten up on them if you have to. I don't know how much drag you want to put on. This is pop them or stop them, baby. It's the big league, brother. Huh. Good. Yep. Short pumps, just like that. Yep. Hmm. All right. You're two minutes in, boo. Come on, gap on the back. Short gap on the back. Ready? Yep. Roger. Here, get this one back here. If you could guess the weight, what do you say? 160. 160? Alright. Well, Gabe, doing a good job of making it look hard, as always. <laughs> there we go. Why are you breathing so heavy, huh? Huh. When you're fighting a fish, you can't even talk with the camera. You're so focused and like winded. This is the best thing ever. I can say whatever I want and he can't talk back. <laughs> I've fished the game enough to know this is true. <laughs> Don't tell everybody my secret. Rob, let's have a popper standing by on the front. Yeah. This one blows up right next to us. They're still airing out the water right over here. We were trolling some baits. We came over top of them. They didn't like it. We pulled the poppers out. We seen a couple of them chase some baits out of the water. Gabe ran up to the bow, got a great cast on them. Tight. Tight. My glasses are fogging. Getting sweaty. Let me take them off. For, you, for <laughs> those of y'all who have never used this type of rod, it doesn't look like it's a very heavy duty rod, but you can fly, put the heat on. Here, Joey, or come grab this camera real quick. I'm just trying to get my big back a break for a second. Yeah. Grab this real quick. Hey, everyone. Digging, digging, brother. He's not wanting to turn his head at all. Maybe if you put it in reverse and go with him. Yeah. 
Powered by Mountain Dew. There you go. Nice job. And Doritos. There we go. There's not going to be any leader on this, Joe, so I'm, 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 it's going to come up and he's going to be right there. I'm ready for There you go. Let's go. There you go. Short pump, short pump. Uh oh, uh oh. That ain't good. Come on, please, no sharks. Gosh! All that for sharks to eat it. Look at the valley of racing across the water right here in front of us. Right here in front of us, the valley of racing across the water. Oh, oh my god! god! Just twitch it! Walk the dog! Walk the dog! Oh, yeah. You got him! You got him! Oh! 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 Oh!
hopefully by now you've seen Kelly's tuna video. Hopefully by now you've seen my nutri rat video from Venice, Louisiana. Kelly's sheep's head video, then Kelly's tuna video, and now you're watching my tuna video. But guess what? This ain't the only tuna video I'm gonna do. Y'all see this right here? This is probably the luckiest hook Kelly and I's ever had. Because this is the hook in the rig that Kelly caught hers on. I rigged it while we were fishing. I actually rigged a split bill ballyhoo, what we caught Kelly's fish on. And then later on, I took the same rig, the same leader, the same copper wire, the weight that's not on here now, I re-rigged it, and I actually caught a monster on it. And I'm gonna show you guys that in another video. I'm actually gonna do a how-to rig a ballyhoo video, exactly like the ballyhoo I rigged in Louisiana that we caught the two huge fish on, but that'll be the next one. This one, I had to just show you what it's like to go out there and have your heart broken, ripped out, then like stomped on a couple times. That's what happened. And in the next video, we actually eat it in a way you would never imagine. So right now we have basil, which I've cut some lines in it just so the leaf will lay flat, some mango, and some tuna that Kelly caught. It was one of our tuna, I don't know, but one of the two tuna we caught that I cut in perfect strips and I actually just froze it. So it's pretty much still frozen. And then we have oh. some of these wontons like this. Same thing that they make egg rolls out of. These can be really tricky to make, but they're amazing. Now, if it was September and I had one of my parents' mangoes, it would be 10 times better, but this is a product of, I don't know, Peru. Yeah, Peru. So in here, I just have one of Kelly's yard eggs scrambled up, and I'm gonna base this whole egg roll with it. Before I do, I'm gonna put a little dab of garlic and just mix all that in. Now the egg, allows this egg roll to stick to itself when you roll it up. And you can make this same dish out of shrimp, fish, steak. These things are absolutely amazing. You can steam down some cabbage. You can literally do anything you want with it and it's so good. I'm gonna take a piece of basil, lay it down flat, put the tuna on top of that, a piece of mango right up against it, a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt, not much, because the dipping sauce we're gonna use is pretty salty. The folding it is the hardest part, because you want it snug, but you don't want to tear these egg rolls. And as I'm going, I'm gonna lather up some more egg. That'll make it stick. I'm gonna fold it that way. Look at that little piece of joy. Like if you're having a party and you want to impress some friends, this is the way to do it. I really, really like doing it with shrimp too. It's like your ultimate motto. If you're having a party? Yeah. I mean, people love parties, babe. People are partiers like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys, big shout out to Joey VT. Joey VT. God. Joe. Joe VT. This is Joe VT. Did I say it right without the Joey? You did it! High, High five. five! Woo! He was like, he always calls me Joey in all of their videos, Kelly's videos as it's well. It's Joey. He's Joey. He's like, that's your name? I was like, Gabe, you tagged me in two Instagram stories today. Is there a Y in any part of it? Listen, he doesn't even know my Instagram account name. It's Isla it's Key. It's Joey VT Fishing. He doesn't know that. Isn't that, it, yeah, he needs help. He's a funny dude to say the least. I'm actually glad he's in Louisiana now. I think that's his calling. He's like that racehorse that's just been ready to let out forever, but hasn't had the freedom. And I think he's gonna get that in Louisiana. And you better watch out, because he's gonna be a hard one to beat. Leave a comment below if you guys enjoy a video of us just losing fish, because that, it doesn't get any more real than that. Like, I even had to beep out some choice words that I said, and that was just pure, I was pissed off. Whatever. Can't help it. Just gotta keep on keeping on. Can I show the fans something real quick? Yeah, show them that picture. Okay. <laughs> so, I took Blue Gabe and the kids to Universal and Islands of Adventure in Orlando. And it's probably gonna be blurry, so I'm gonna try to get a close-up on my phone. But Luke and Jake's face on this drop on this ride was hilarious. And that's it. Four tuna basil rolls. Now the important part is, is your grease and I don't want to, okay perfect. 
You want it 350 degrees. The tuna inside these rolls are almost frozen and that's for a reason. I don't want the tuna to be cooked too much. And I almost put too much grease in there. But they're literally gonna be done in like less than a minute. I'm very intrigued with the mango and the basil roll. It's gonna be interesting. The only part that I don't remember, or I guess I don't even know period, because I've never asked, is if they like slightly steam the basil before they put it in a roll oh. or not. Maybe they saute it or something. Yeah, maybe saute it, but I think it's, because it's on the outer layer, I think it's gonna be cooked. Yeah, should be good. And if you guys haven't checked out our videos before this one from Venice, like I said earlier, the Nutra Rat, Kelly Sheep's Head video, Captain Ron Price, they don't get, I can literally shoot Nutra Rats every day. Like that, I, you could just hire me to shoot Nutris and then cook them because they're that good to eat. And in my Nutra Rat video this time, we have a chef who, I actually am gonna tell his story. So I now need you to go back and watch that video if you haven't. So Chef William, he's actually not a chef. Here's the really, really cool story about Chef William and I think America in general. So he was actually just cleaning yellowfin tuna on the docks down there at Venice. So when all the charter guys come in, they have so much fish that they can't clean them all on their own. So they have guys down there cleaning them. And that's what William used to do. Well, when Ron met him, they were having a conversation and William said, man, I love to cook. Well, Ron said, I need a cook. So he went from being just a guy down there cleaning tuna to now a chef at Ron's amazing, amazing lodge at his outfitter, which is the Fish Intimidator Lodge. So literally you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it, because I can assure you, he never thought he would be in a really, really amazing kitchen like that. And now he's, he just blew all of our mind with that Nutri Rat. So go back and watch that. Leave a comment below. Tell Mr. William how good he did and give him a big thumbs up because he did an awesome job. Watch this. Oh. 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 And just like that, we're ready to eat. So these are the uneven ends of these chunks that we just made sashimi style. If you freeze it, it's just like cooking it. So we caught this fish, I think six days ago. It's still edible if you take care of it. Look at that. Oh, Kelly's trying to reach in there. Yes, yes I am. Mm. I wish we had like a more professional serving table right now, but really not even caring. Oh, that looks so perfect right there. Now at Food Shack, they have like a green wasabi sauce that is amazingly good, but I don't know how to make it. So we're going to eat it with this right here. And I think it's going to be just as good. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mmm. Is it hot? Mm-mm. Just wait. Mm -hmm. Try it, boo. All right, can we admire the different layers of the tuna, the basil, and the mango? I'm over here chewing behind the camera. Put it in that sauce a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. That basil is so good. I'm telling you, look at that though. You know what's funny is I was in Trader Joe's and I was looking at a basil plant. I'm like, I love basil, but we never cook with basil. We should start cooking with basil more. I don't know, it's a lot better than cilantro. Mm, I wonder if they, anybody's noticed Luke's new snapper rod right over there. It has Luke's in it? Yeah. He okay. said, oh boy. What did he do? Oh, I can't remember. He did something and you were gone. I don't know. So I, I was talking to Luke and I said, Luke, I need to tell you something. He's like, what? I'm like, I'm proud of you. He's like, for what? I was like, you've just been really good lately. You know when your kids go through like a really good streak? That's Luke right now. The funniest thing was, here, let me just tell this quick story. So the other day we were turkey hunting, I think, Saturday evening. Wind was blowing like crazy, crazy hard, really, really hard. And 
a lot of y'all that turkey hunt, you know when the birds go to roost, turkeys roost in a tree, first off. I gotta always remember that not all of y'all are hunters. But... I, have a clip of the, I have a clip of a turkey going Yeah, so I'll, and I do too. I'll show you one right now. This is a clip of birds actually flying down in the morning. Well, the opposite of that is what they do in the evenings. They fly up to stay away from predators and whatever. Well, a lot of times when they do fly up, they'll gobble in the evening, maybe if they've not gobbled on the ground. So it's a good thing when you're hunting to listen for birds gobbling late, like right before dark, because then you know where to set up on them the, morning the next morning. So it's about that time, and I told Luke, I said, Luke, he had been watching me use my slate call. He goes, let me try, and I let him try for a second, and I said, we'll work on that at home. So it gets that time, I said, Luke, stay here, be real quiet, I'm gonna go real quick and listen for a bird. So I go like 200 yards away and this gobbler starts gobbling his head off. Well, at that same time, I hear a hen that's roosting near Luke in the blind. I'm like, how did she get there without me hearing her? I didn't hear her fly up. I start listening, nope, it's Luke. He's got in my turkey vest, got the call out, and he's over there going, arr, 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 and the gobbler's going, Caw! he's answering because that's another thing that people that don't hunt, when a turkey's gobbling, he's communicating with the females. And when the females yelp, they're communicating with each other and the gobbler. So when Luke was calling, that gobbler's like, hey, sweetheart, I'm over here, so in the morning we'll hook up. <laughs> well, you don't really want them to know where you're at because in the morning, if you don't plan on sitting there, they might fly down and go over there because they're like, hey, you know, Shaniqua's over there, I need to go see her this morning. Well, Luke's over there, just, that turkey's just gobbling every breath. So I run around the corner and you gotta be real quiet because you don't want the turkey to hear you. And Luke stands up and goes, did you hear him dad? Did you hear him? He was gobbling every breath. So I was actually really proud of him because he took the initiative to try to learn how to call on his own. He didn't know that he was doing something wrong. He actually sounded really good, but that's Luke. Luke is, Jake's amazing too. And don't ever think because we're talking about Luke that we're not also communicating about Jake. But Luke is one that will just go do something on his own. He takes a sledgehammer and breaks a rock in the driveway almost every day to see what's inside of it, a rock. And then I stepped on one the other day and about broke my ankle. So. Anyhow, this is an amazing dish, something super easy, and you don't have to catch a tuna to make this dish. Go to your local seafood place, buy a pound of tuna, and make that. You will not be disappointed. And hopefully, this video didn't disappoint you, and hopefully you stay tuned for the next one, because I'm going to show you how to rig an awesome bait, and then how to slay a giant, an absolute giant, the biggest fish I've ever caught on rod and reel, ever. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for all the positive comments, thanks for checking out Kelly Young's channel behind the corner, it's Kelly Young. If you don't hear me say Kelly Young enough, I'll say it one more time, it's Kelly Young. Check out her channel, check out Joe VT on YouTube, like and subscribe all three. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. Mmm. All right, good. Can't say that ain't good. That's good. So good.